I gotta go to I gotta go watch one of these World Cup games, man. Like, is Sweden playing? Really? Yeah. Oh shit. Uh, since I'm in England, I'll say it. They're gonna get first, or they're gonna win. I know England's about to play uh, tomorrow against Sweden, so this should be a good game. Might get crazy out here if they lose. Yeah, football. This World Cup's definitely been more exciting than than most of them. So, I've had a fun time watching. When there's a World Cup happening in the world, like for sure, like Brazilians are watching. I don't know. It's gonna be tough for Sweden. Sweden has like a really solid defense, but England has like, I don't know, they've been playing well. You guys, you guys gotta be scared of Harry Kane. <laughs> it would be cool to see England win as well, and maybe Sweden. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> maybe England make top four. All right. No. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. No, you're right. You're right. Sweden make top four. Welcome back to the show. E United dominate on the pick of NTC. It is heard. It is known. That was the pick of NTC. They got absolutely spanked, man. They got the Thanos click of the fingers, except they they, they were the entire half that got de deleted. I don't feel so good. Well, hopefully you feel better now. Moving into Inferno. We need a change, man. When you want to see a competitive match, don't we, that? Yeah. It's interesting because the United, they were firing off on all cylinders individually. We saw a lot of really great plays and, um, you know, right at the end, I think the way that it ended really encapsulated that with the way that Dapper was able to just read the movement. I mean, here it is. This, this was it. Able to read the movement and just like very well react to the situation very calmly. But they are on point right now, which is really cool to see because this is something that could really be make or break for United. Like you were talking previously about, you know, you judge you know, teams based on their history, of course, you know, that, that makes sense. And they are here to, to really change the course of what their history is and how they are perceived as a team. And I think there, there are sparks of brilliance there. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how they can, they can put this together because Inferno is a map they can absolutely win. I think this would be one of their better maps, to be honest. Um, I would be surprised if this wasn't a very close game. Cuddle game is on point in the Brazilian camp. It was nice to see a victory for England in the football today, although after the Colombian game like that, the Colombians fashion in which they were playing was so offensive <laughs> that that I think it really hyped everyone up even more so. So like for the Swedish game, it was just like a nice polite game of football. Yep. Wasn't that engaging. There were some nice spots, but it wasn't really... Once the first goal went in, it's like, there, okay, There wasn't cool. a lot of like crazy drama or anything like that. Yeah, but... Uh, the f but the Colombian game was like, it was just so slimy, man. I was just ready. <laughs> it got me like right into the football. Anyway, the knife is uh, <coughs> going down at the moment in the mid position. We'll soon see who starts on uh, what side. Well, United got wrecked and NTC can choose. Let's see what they choose to do. No, Ninjas of Pajamas would, uh, they would often start on the T side of Inferno if it was the first map of a best of three as a warm up, if you will. But um, I think that opportunity has come and gone for NTC and they will choose the CT side. So we will see. I mean, I would be curious to see how they approach A with AWPs on, on the CT side of Inferno, how aggressive they will choose to be. Because uh, the the aggression, I would argue, is more dangerous on New Inferno than it used to be on Old Inferno. Um, so, very curious to see what they will, <coughs> excuse me, Asma, what they will uh, offer us. Slight tech issue to be solved on the uh, NTC side before we get things kicked off. What are your expectations here, Dan? I think I think it'll be a close game. I think that United, if they're if they're hitting like they were in the previous game, and again, it's a team that we know has you know, good fundamentals. And I do recall seeing some good stuff from them on Inferno in the ECS season. That you know, I, th I think there's a really solid chance here that they could uh, bring this together. And it's, and I think actually starting off on the T side is quite cool because. I want to know how their T-side plays out, first of all, to really have a good judgment as to how this will go because like the T-side Inferno can be so tough and I think that it will be problematic for NTC uh, just because they like to use a lot of orbs. It can be very awkward to use orbs. If you're going to do it, you need to be able to back it up with like proper utility, good mid-round calling. Like it's, it's, it's pretty awkward. So I'm looking forward to seeing 
uh, first of all, how United's approach is, and whether we'll see the sort of the sort of no respect approach that uh, is starting to become a bit more commonplace, where you know if that banana smoke's thrown down, screw it, we're gonna go through it. See, there's the motto, James. Screw it, we're gonna go through it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> nice. So one of the uh, one of the players, I think it was Cello, could uh, could not. Was nothing was coming up when he was pressing tab. The solution to doing that is to change your resolution to anything else and change it back. But he left the server. So that can't be the problem, James. That can't be. It because can't be. everyone knows it. that. They typed it in the uh Oh my god, but everyone knows that, surely. They typed it in the chat. So But you don't what do you need a scoreboard for? You need a scoreboard. Make your teammate scoreboard. Keep uh well if you need to mass over to see how many people survive the round or something, then you know. He's just a fragger, James. He does his job, it's his mission. I think He's it does uh, so obscure other things as well sometimes but there we go I think they are good to go they are ready for the ting so we will be kicking things off very shortly indeed I can't wait to see the orc the battles here I think Inferno does allow for some style and KNG has just been a treat to watch all eyes on KNG for me both my eyes I've got two eyes Dan that's good to know, James. It's interesting, like, KNG's got a very Italian name, Vito Giuseppe. And I think, is it FNX or Phelps who has basically a name which sounds Asian? His last name is Lau. I don't know. Interesting times. We live in international... Uh... Oh, I figured out the Romeo and Juliet thing, by the way. Okay. Make it snappy. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get back to that in a moment. All right. <laughs> <laughs> then you don't make an announcement. Now, announcement of an announcement. Phelps in a position by the graveyard, looking for the first task. He's seen some great stuff. I mean, prioritizes the man planting the bomb. Doesn't get it done, though. This is looking very, very bad already now for NTC. A 5v3 post plant for United to play with. They've got lots of time to... Now they know where two of the three players are. That's that's pretty big. And they're already being picked at. Oh, man, this is, this is not going to go well, is it? Just Cello left in a 1v3 now. Time on the bomb is it's taken away. It's taken away. If he moves away, well, this is a, an interesting value proposition. If he just leaves and takes no damage, he can, if he wants to, buy a helmet for three fifty dollars. If he stands here and takes damage to his armor, then what will he choose to do? Okay, so he's taken two damage. Maybe he wouldn't have bought a helmet anyway, but it's a, it's a consideration. If the T's are anywhere near the bomb, they're going to take damage. Yep. Right, so... So there's a couple misconceptions. One is that people, miss, uh, that people mess up the line. And the line is actually where for art thou. Not where, where art thou. Where art thou does actually, as you say, literally mean where are you, but where for means why. So there it is. And that's actually the line in the play. It's wherefore, not... Wherefore being one word. Wherefore being one word, and it means why. So wherefore out there... Why is Gamora? Like, why are you? So why are you here? Why are you here? Going to get brutally murdered. You romantic pleb. What are you doing in my manner? Sunny Jim. Archer's been taken by the T side. They can wrap it if they can choose to wrap or... Maybe that won't really be the play for them. Relic down to 22 HP and Cello will be around the corner of the smoke. Now Dazzle's made his way up towards B and Moose is making his way up Banana quietly. They're suggesting that they're rotating away, but Cello can go for a jump peek. He could even go for a jumping frag here. Not that he would be intending to do that, but there we go. That is a cleanup operation, which leaves FNX alone towards the yeah, Mr. Lau. He's Mr. Lau towards the A side. Wasn't it? Oh. Is it a Batman where there's a Mr. Lau in China? The first Batman. I have with, no with idea. With Christian to be Bale, and uh, uh. they and Morgan Freeman goes over there to look at his books and stuff, <laughs> and he's like, "They can't uh, get me here." I have Hong Kong or whatever, and then Batman comes and takes him away. Just gets like a touch of plane. I don't remember, to be honest. It's Mr. Lau, man. It was FNX. <laughs> NT, uh, NT, okay. Windows oh. NT are all in uh, the A site. Although not actually in the A site at all. They're just around A. They're around the A site. 
and they have stacked what we would call a stack. They are all in the same place. They have concentrated their efforts. They're like the Power Rangers when they all come together and make the big Zord robot with the sword. Oh my god. <laughs> and they all burst. Goodbye, Dazzle. Well, the bomb knows... Well, the bomb, the bomb knows nothing, actually. It's just an inanimate object. But the player holding the bomb knows that the B bomb site is clear, so that's... Uh, they can just hunt for the frags now, as the bomb will be planted. If anyone knows the answer to the Batman and Lal question James had, you can you can uh, follow me on Twitter and then tweet James the answer the answer in that in that order, preferably. It's my payment for helping to facilitate answers to you, James. They should follow you. You need to catch up. <laughs> That's true. Dan's more of an Instagrammer. He's a vlogger on Instagram. <laughs> My last Instagram post is like February or something. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's actually January, actually. I just go to antique clock stores and use Instagram yeah, stories. Actually, you're to post way videos. more active than me. You're actually really active. You're actually <laughs> a you're actually active. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I don't post. <laughs> I don't make posts though. Just the stories. So it's like if you go to my Instagram, you won't see much. But it's like a s secretly, it's all in the stories. 3-0, and KNG is back to his usual shenanigans. Cello going for the brazen peaks. These guys do not give a monkeys. KNG making his way over towards the A site now. The top of mid is smoked. KNG on arch. Dazzle in the boiler position. Marvelous frag from FNX. Nothing doing for E United here. Very limited in their options. Two players remain. The bomb joining Moose. But Moose is the only person with flashbangs. So if they were to try and burst out balcony. Oh, there goes the bomb. And soon there will go the neighborhood. Ooh. Oh, nice catch by Moose in the end there. Trying to follow through, but he can't do it, unfortunately. It's going to be a 3-1 scoreline. United will be conceding around finally. I was worried for NTC that they would not really be able to get anything going early on, as we saw on train. So the orbs out for both sides. The utility is maximized. Maximal utility. That's what you like to see on Inferno. It really is an inferno. Just, I think that's like five molotovs just cast on banana. Banana is ridden with flames, although it has been extinguished. Oh my god! Three players facing from the CT side. Uh, two, uh, yeah, three players are facing from the CT side. We've got four v four now ensuing as the rotation comes in. Is what is going on here? Lovely headshot from Dazzle. Committing into the A bomb site. This is anyone still, though. The bomb needs to be planted, and CTs are making their way forwards. Bit misses a very important shot. That might just be the difference here to allowing United a way to win this round. Not comfortably, but at least with an edge. Still holding on to a 3v3. Good post plant positions. Cello's still on. Oh, no, he's not. Ignore me. Phelps trapped in the apartments now. Cello in that arch position and bit top mid. And it seems that they will save. Opportunity has come and gone. Two of the three players have a kit, but too many players, not enough time. And they can save the second sniper rifle. So this is a pretty good situation for them. Yeah, this is really, really good. Saving three guns, two of which AWPs. It will definitely soften the blow of being reset as they are. United not really in a position to go and hunt for the kills either, which is unfortunate for them, but... Actually, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they decide from a calling perspective for this round, because they, they will know that three guns were saved, and, at least, and that there is at least one AWP, so that they know that there will be a full buy here. So I'm, I would love to... Well, I guess we're going to see how they interpret this. So exchanging utility, that's one thing that they can have an edge on in this round, is utility. If they try to keep create pressure, try to bait out utility, they're going to come out 
you know, ahead. And if they don't come out ahead on utility, then they will on map control because that means that the TTs, if they can, if they're holding on to utility, they're not using it to deny map control. That's a a cool smoke to throw sometimes as a tease to try to bait out a response from the CTs. Although there will be none in response to that CT smoke. Phelps investigating. Oh, this is big. Oh, oh no, what a miss. But into the darkness he goes. And Cello is delivering the kills. He's playing the right tune this time. He's got himself an orchestra. Two plays remain there on Banana. KNG lies in wait, and the bit is by the coffins as well. Oh no, he's not. He's boosted up here. Excuse me, reading the map wrong. Do they even have the personnel to check this? Oh, Dapper jumping past the angle because they're exposed to CT. KNG's head was spotted, and Ace is about to be swatted. Second round on the board for NTC. Nobody dying for them. That's a money-making round. They're making the cash. Yeah, that's such an important one for them. Cello with a great performance. It, honestly, it looks so, so bad. Fels is struggling. It looked like Fels was going to die being chased through the smoke. And Cello comes out and gets a 3k. So the difference maker, but United's approach in this round will change dramatically. Three CZs will speed up the pace. Two AKs to back that up with and a bunch of utility. This is a dangerous round. No two ways about it, but Fels would diffuse that danger slightly as he will take down Moose towards second mid with a fast timing. And that's one of the AKs on the ground. Should soon be collected, no doubt. United slowing things down. They are running lower on utility. Three smokes, two molotovs, and two flashes, though. It's still a good amount to run a wide variety of plays. And they already have banana. NTC just relaxing at the moment on the bomber sites. Saving their utility. Looks like United want to go for it. They've grouped up. One last big effort here towards this B-bomb site. Trying to bait out some counter utility. And they will. Incoming. Warning signs, warning signals. KNG trying to avoid the flashbangs. He sees multiple targets, can't land a shot this time or that time. Or what about the new time? Yes, he can. Ace taken out, but he knows. Plays of advantage, his position. Jumping around, the air strafe will be a problem. And now there are weapons for this post-plant situation. All of a sudden, this is a very winnable round for E United. Ooh. Dazzle playing with fire on that angle. Dapper could make the difference. That's a big peak. Phelps goes down. Relics by Paul adjusts out of the flash with the spray. Finds the head. Now FNX to try to deliver the, the 2K to save the round. But Dapper around new box. Beautiful round in the end from him. And what... I mean, you have to... Look, that opportunity was uh, due to the fact that KNG missed two shots in a row, though, which is pretty rough, but it was still well handled by United. Yeah, you've got to hit those shots... Targets huddled together. Multiple places for them to look. Land those shots. But they have another buy, NTC. Three round deficit, but they got the guns. Just the one AWP on this occasion, but there is one to take away should they prove successful in this round. Cello and Bit towards B, this time KNG. He's posted up on short now, so. They have changed the configuration. And it's down to United to identify this without losing too many personnel. Some spray for the uh, position on the roof. KNG is comfortable around Boiler. FNX playing double stack on A. Instead of the usual balcony positions. Three smoke grenades here for NTC. But, uh, well, yeah, Bit, Bit has one towards the... B bomb site, but will he wait for an engagement? That's a nice timing, 55 seconds. That will thwart the timing of a United. Big push. Three players here for NTC ready. It's a little bit slow here from United. 
And Pelts will have an easy one. In fact, they're just lining things up here for NTC. Easy finish. Easy does it. United need to do a little bit more than that if they want to expect to break a bomb site with no prior presence on the map. Yeah, they get stuck in the choke point because they're waiting for that opening frag and it doesn't come. Especially with a big smoke around new box that the CTs can play around that. It does compromise what they might want to do, but it does also give them some uh, some shenanigans to, to, to run. So... They just, they really want that kill before they come in. It's not given to them and they are pretty much stuck in their tracks. And again, they get taken out by a guy boosted on a flower position. And you can bounce HE grenades off the wall to land in that position. You don't really see it in professional matches. Um, I mean, maybe other grenades are prioritized. If you double naded that, you'd probably get a kill a lot of the time. Or force the player down. Goodbye. Quick push through. Good response. Dapper gets himself to ace. Eliminates the player in pits. They've claimed enough space on the bomb side to be very happy with the post plant. And there is just nothing that NTC can do here. They've it, once again it's it's win around, lose around, win around, lose around. And I don't know how long NTC can sustain that. Yes, both teams have been trading rounds for a while now, but that does favour the T side. They have a, uh, well, now a three-round lead, so that will favor them. and But also, the buys are cheaper for them, and they can get a quick bonus even if they plant the bomb and lose. So this is a problem for the CT side. The AWP will be held on to, and they do have some money. They can buy around these, and we may see a reasonable buy. We'll have to wait and see what the money looks like, but this is less than ideal. Again, it's still, I mean, we're going into round number 10, so it could be a, a lot worse timing. But by no means do they want to proceed in this fashion. And look what United started with in this round. Again, such is the nature of a, uh, a force buy after losing a round. And now NTC's turn to force straight back. So the M4s are out. Again, they're a team we've seen who are not afraid to prioritize the, the better weapons rather than the utility and frag outs. And it seems they will be doing that on this occasion as well. They've got two, only two smoke grenades. And that is a, a standard purchase on a map such as Inferno. So expect some ruthless aggression. That man knows his manners. He's sitting in front of a computer screen and still covering his mouth when he coughs. Thank you very much. More of this, please. So here it is, big rounds after a small little breather for both teams. Utility game definitely an advantage United. Which makes it cool that they don't go banana straight away. They allow the T's, the T's, CTs to use their utility first. Now we're seeing Dapper move in towards Logs. There's not really any remaining utility to punish him. Actually, there was an angle there, perhaps. Oh, he walks back into it. KNG offered up a second opportunity for a frag, perhaps overstepping, in fact, absolutely so, from Dapper. And he will lament that decision. A 4v5, though, is not the end of the world for United, as they are on the T side. Well, okay, it's a 3v5. Now they can start to... Now they can start to feel bad about it because it is looking pretty bad now. KNG is really having at them with that AWP. And they can't seem to find a way in just yet. Committing to A, Dazzle needs to get something. Thirty five seconds on the clock. Any peak is a gamble for what remains of United in this round. FNX expects a flashbang. None comes, but Phelps is there to clean up. 20 seconds for this bomb to go down. And that smoke invites them to plant. Not sure who threw it, but sometimes CTs will do that. And there are the remainder of the frag. So I think it was, uh, I want to say it was Haji who would sometimes be deep in the site and he would drop a smoke in that direction when the time was low because it would almost invite the T's to try and plant on default. And then he's got a super easy spray to stop the plants and win the round. 
so it can be a blessing and a curse that smoke you must be careful and the force buys continue and once again ntc win and now they've got the second awp once more three mac 10s united will once more be looking for those fast plays trying to burst and force their way through these awp angles but these molotovs are going to do colossal damage and cello is cleaning up he's beating them with the violin yeah it's the thing is is that ntc survived for four players in the previous round so I'm not sure about the effort to force buy, just because because they wouldn't be they wouldn't have been able to like fully reset NTC. Um, so we'll see how they handle things now, but they are going to have to save this round. So there's that. I think they had to respect that Molotov because I feel yeah. like if you're if you're really close as that Molotov goes down, then whoever you know you have a window to take a duel. And you will frag or you will die. Or both. But I think they had to do too much running through it. And then trying to trade, basically running from the start of the Molotov to the end, it's just suicide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I understand they've got the Mac 10s They've got to play close and so on. But that's, I think, after the first guy dies especially, I think it's very low percentage. Yeah, you got to respect the fact that they have a huge amount of utility, and every time that they have had utility, they've been fighting for banana early on and throwing it. So, but again, I mean, it's, I think if they look back at that position, they would probably reassess it. Either way, um, they still have six rounds. They're still in the lead for now. It, this should be the tying round <coughs> for NTC. Line them up. Line them up. That's a wrap. Good Body point. bags on banana. Zip them up. Throw them in the river. Six to six. A very well-equipped NTC. Lie in wait for an United. Now, United have an AK buy. They know they're up against two snipers. When they had four spies, they went for the uh, the numbers game, the shock and awe. They went to overwhelm the sniper rifle players. Now they have a more respectable buy. You would expect to see more respectable counter-strike. We've got vintage Fnatic strats coming out from the likes of KNG. He's got a support structure there. This is the next shot, but FNX cleans up. Classic counter-strike being played here by NTC. That leaves Relics alone. We're looking at another round with minimal casualties for the counter-terrorist side. Indeed, no casualties whatsoever. And they are quickly heading towards the $10,000 mark in the last two rounds of the first half. That is pretty damn quick <laughs> if you consider all the force fires. Now that you mention it. Oh, wow. Easy peasy. Okay. Three... High explosives from a United. Where are those going to go? Well, Kenji's going to be shooting fish in a barrel. You're the one that was always offended whenever I would say that, right? I used to... We, My old office, we had a fish tank. And I had a shark, a vegetarian shark in that fish tank, which I left behind... Um, no, I didn't leave behind, actually. We had some idiot drug-addicted moronic manager in that particular branch who got rid of the fish tank. You know, you come in, you've got to change the place to make it look like you've done something significant. And my fish went to somebody else, my lovely shark. That was the beginning of my shark journey. And that's the end of my story because we are into the last round of the first half and both these teams are on the bite. Ace is back on the sniper rifle. There'll be three on the server. Can they change their fortunes? In the last few rounds, they went to a tarot reader. And they turned over the card of death. The Reaper. That's the Green Reaper, James. Perhaps that is, that the is, next uh, card will be the card of seven rounds on the T side Jiggly of Inferno. Puff. Jigglypuff. No. Is that a is that a Pikachu? <sighs> it's, you can't even pretend, James. You play you play Smash. You've seen Smash. You can't even pretend. I haven't played Smash. You, you you have to have no never. But you've seen, never but you've seen Smash. Smash. Yeah, but all I know is that music. Bam, 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 bam. I don't know anything else. <laughs> well, 
United have top mid presence and doesn't look like they want to do much else. They're just going to keep pushing it until something breaks. Hopefully it's not them, for their sake at least. FNX still in the pit position, easily dealing with Moose. More players to go though, and he'll get traded out eventually. And it's a pretty good trade overall for United. Two players there for NTC. Not much, wow, that is, don't really have to peak the AWP, but all right. Question now is if they've given a legitimate chance here now for NTC in the last round. So they're gonna go for it no matter what. This is scary. Ace doing a good job though, holding things down. And he will finish it off. Seven rounds for United, eight for NTC. What a, it's a very interesting half though. It was. It was very curious. It's it's quite often interesting when you have the four spies being won back and forth, and I think it was interesting on this occasion. And now NTC, who chose the CT side, will start on the uh, on the T side in the second half. Our eight rounds enough again. They lost their map pick to E United. That was train. They got spanked. So they got thrown out the window. Maybe they're still falling. Who knows? USPs. Dazzle not shy to take a duel here, and why not? He has such a range advantage. Dapper with the smoke grenade and defuse kit. Trivia, we have smoke grenades, and we set one off, and uh, the fire brigade may or may not have come to our office. But they were glad to get out of the house. I kid you not. <clears throat> Three CTs in the B bomb sites. I think we still have two to five smoke grenades somewhere in a cupboard. Let's be mindful of, you know, taxpayers, James. I should know taxpayers where they are. Money. <laughs> I don't think I know where they are. We reached the one minute mark on the clock. NTC with the Glocks. No P250s, but they have two smoke grenades and three flashbangs. What is their plan? What is their offering to the gods? They've lobbed a bunch of grenades. And flashbangs, lots of nades. Oh, quick pop from Relics. How many more pops will be found though? Another one from Relics doing a great job so far. Desperately searching for the last one, but it runs out of bullets. Woe is Relics. Good effort though, 3v3. Bomb will be planted, however. NKNG has a pretty favorable engagement. USB can be collected. Now it's down to a Moose and a Dapper. An unlikely duo. What can they achieve together? A great many things, perhaps. The smoke to create space. And Bit is now in the pit alone. He may have an angle on a diffuser, or maybe not. He's not alone, actually. He's got KNG there as well, and Dapper oh! has to come off the bomb, and NTC. Wow. Oh, he diffused it. Yeah, he got it. Yo! <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, man. He, it almost looked like he was coming off of it as well. That I didn't was, even hear it. That's crazy. Wow. That is a robbery. What a... What that's a, a daylight robbery. He had the motorcycle helmet and a hammer to call the jewels. Oh, my God. That was incredibly close. And it has such enormous implications. NTC will not be happy about that. In fact, they've opted, go opted to force buy. Let's get the force buys going. Got the AKs, Deagles, MAC-10, some grenades. Who the hell knows how this one's going to turn out by the end of this round, round 17. This is really interesting. On Inferno, like this buy that United have on, let's say, a cash. They may be in trouble because the AKs are going to find loads of great engagements on, in like the open spaces, but Inferno is all pretty close range, mostly close to mid-range. So the, um, the MP9s and the UMP will have a have a pretty high efficacy if you just pick the, the, the many good spots for them. So this is going to be tough for NTC, really. Oh, the creep. Well, Ace, there is. Oh, the timing of that flashbang. Got to be really cautious there. He's still want to overstep it, but does just enough. Going out with the USP as well. Has to know that so there can be someone in the library, but no. Does get taken down. Oh, his teammates exposed. Did they see Moose as well? Because that's a problem if they know there are two players 
in this position. And it's a problem that only Phelps is alive, tries to avoid a flashbang, gets taken out by an MP9 and gives up an AK-2, in fact. So that fourth fight was a colossal failure. They gave great weapons away, didn't plant the bomb, didn't kill enough players. That is a problem. That is a problem. And that puts NTC on the $2,000 mark. You were talking about bridges earlier, Dan. Yeah. A quick addition on, uh, I think it's London Bridge. I think you can still get, I think it's called the Freedom of the City or something, where you take a sheep over the bridge and then you get to where like a golden, little golden necklace thing. Because my old boss did it. So in his pictures now, he's got these, this gold chain thing on. Might be a lot to take a sheep over a bridge. It's It seems hard to believe, but it, it often sounds like you worked with, in, in your past life, James, you worked with weirder people than me. It's it, it's very pompous, but um, I mean, why not? If it gets you if it gets you through a door with some people who may lead some new business, then well, give, then bring me a sheep. Or carrying a sheep over a bridge. You don't carry a sheep. You just walk with it. Leading it's a old. Sheep. It's old white posh people. Old posh white people. That's a thing. I worked in those circles. Oh, fit the, the description <laughs> most of the time, so... <laughs> Very fast aggression on Banana is working out for United. They are trying to build a bridge to a 2-0. <laughs> I, can't, I can't, there's no wit left, if there ever was any in the first place. There wasn't. <laughs> So NTC, they've been given something to think about. They, they've been sent to the corner. They've In the last 20 seconds, they've just been sat in this, in this corner whilst the grenades have been dissipating molotovs and smokes and the like. They have one flashbang. Do you use it to take banana or do you use it to take the sights? Ace is on his own. He spots the, uh, the cap of one player and falls back. Dapper's moving into position in CT. Unfortunately, he has no flash. If he did, he could flash pull and uh, Ace could face, and who knows what might happen. He has a smoke grenade, he could drop it in the front of the site, which would create some space to defend the site. But somehow they managed to get uh, an even better smoke and contain NTC, who seem non-committal, but they're running out of time now. 30 seconds, and their next push has got to be the push. Dapper's starting to move away again, and I feel like from KNG's position, I don't know if he can hear Dapper running. Does he check high? He doesn't check high. And that is an early kill. And now Ace can buy some time. More damage coming in from both sides. And now there's a man advantage. So construction is held by United currently. So this restricts NTC to the bomb site. Cello revealing himself at the pull position. And that's a very common one. FNX's position is also super common, so they should be able to, to figure it out. Oh, the trade comes in, now down to Cello. Not anymore, Relics. Very good job from him. Deals with the, uh, deals with the situation very well. And 11 to 8 will be the scoreline now as United continue. They continue to impress. Yeah, and NTC definitely... It was definitely got it got pretty awkward with the utility usage so late from United. Timely smokes and all that. Money is kind of bad for NTC. They are actually completely broke. United have not got too much either, so got to be very cautious here. Both teams. Oh, actually, Relic does have 10k, but everyone else is. You're a liar, Dan. Is uh, not in the best spot. Four rounds from four so far for United. A containment smoke is deployed and Phelps eats the flashbang. And there's two CTs will fall back ever so slightly. Double short play from United. They'll have no one on arch for the time being. And uh, I don't think anyone's boosted on, on the short position. Oh, excuse me. Moose is on the balcony. So we'll have a look. Phelps lurking towards B for the time being, showing some presence there. Now, B Moose can jump over towards the uh, roof if he needs to later on, if he needs to cut off players heading towards that arch position. So we'll see how that one plays out. Ace slowly repositioning. NTC are not offering any sound cues towards this Ace site, but they are all here now after Phelps was making some heavy steps towards B. 
Great position from Moose. Good for one. Repositioning comes in. Ace also able to do the same. They're really making NTC struggle here. They're, they're moving really well. Uh, e United at the moment is on the defense. Forcing NTC to go through quads. Dazzle. Almost got, gets himself another one there. Good damage done. Two players on the bomb side for NTC as the rotation comes in. They have some, a few, a mere few seconds to breathe. But here comes Relics. He can flash the site from that position. Bouncer flash, which goes beyond the double stack. There's a high one from Dapper. FNX, I don't know if he's played his hand just yet, but he's on fire now, trying to go for the duel, but he won't win that frag first. And he's bitten a one versus three. Not going to work out for him. And it's a three-man retake, which in which they all survive at United. They're looking pretty good at the moment. Yeah, they're looking really great. And again, I think the most experience I have had with the United has been in that last ETS season that we did. And... Honestly, they did so. They actually did really. They actually were in a position where they could have qualified. There was they, a reality. They would, have, they would have, if they were in the country to play their matches. Yeah, yeah. So, so they were a team that have I think been underlooked, uh, generally speaking. And and there is a lot of name value on, on the the side of the Brazilian team NTC. Not to say that, you know, it's not a good team or something like that. Just that, it's easier to to look to them and be like, ah, I know these players. Like these players have been in majors, these players have won majors, you know, and these players have been in these teams and so on. Whereas at United, you can't really say the same thing for them, but they have been putting the work in, and it's absolutely showing here. And Relics has been doing very well in this game. Some like won some important clutches for his team. And Dazzle looking to go fast into the apartments. What goes? What goes? He's not going to find much. I was going to ask the question, you know, what what is he going to find? But he presses the big red button. Abort. Scary NTC. times. Yeah, NTC <clears throat> slowly approaching the apartment's position. Being really careful about it this time. But this is running their own clock down. So it seems the respect has risen as the shadow of 16 rounds for E United starts to loom large. 1 minute 10 and E United have not given him anything early. And he'll start to head towards Banana once the initial utility has gone. But United have held on to a hell of a lot. We've got a minute on the clock or less, and they still have four smoke grenades, just deploying one now towards top mid. Relics has a smoke on the B bomb site, so NTC haven't really done anything yet. And United have not been forced to utilize all their utility, and that could be a problem for NTC. Starting to move towards top mid now. And now all the smokes are being deployed, but it is slaughtering the time. E United confident enough to rotate a fourth player towards this A bomb site to keep an eye on Arch. And if he can engage, then Ace can pop out, although he's moving deeper into the site. We've got Moose towards the graveyard position as well. And this is just a charge of 20 seconds here. And it is, I mean, I'm not surprised that nothing is happen happening at this point because it's pretty much guesswork from NTC. And it leaves Phelps alone. Yeah, the T side is tough. Like the the CT side is is you know generally, <laughs> well, it's generally okay if you're not playing with a very experienced team, but uh, who's experienced together. But I I think the T side is where you can really see problems when you're playing against a good stable defense, just because there's a lot of nuances which you have to sort of do well and do right to to you know, expand the utility of the CTs to make it really difficult for them to understand where to like uh, put their players from a rotation perspective. There's all these like small little details that you've got to put together. And that's a beautiful and bold push coming from Dazzle. How much more does he try to chew? Well, maybe a little bit too much. He was not able to handle all of it, but he did get the information and did some damage. Uh, I was, yeah, that's a very vulnerable spot for a CT player and Seems those problems will be compounded now that Moose has been picked off. Ace has more than one place to look at now from his position near the library. Short and uh, the balcony area. Although it seems he's trusting them not to push through. And sometimes you have to take those gambles. You can't really realistically focus on everything. And maybe the roles will change now that Dapper moves into the site. But again, with only three players left for the CT site, they are devoid of information. Relics is being uh, relied upon to hold down the B bomb site. And they just 
have to wait for NTC to make a play. Indeed they do. In interestingly, NTC have one flashback. So that play, they better hope they find the, the AWP. Ace has been very good. Ready, waiting. Finger on the trigger. Flashbang, though. Very effective use of the flashbang to take the bomb site. Now down to relics for the clutch as he has to sprint all the way from the B bomb site. It's a lonely and long sprint. And eventually he'll arrive onto the bomb site. Here he goes. He's got one player that's weak. That's the one on the site. Let's see if Bit plays this well. I wonder if. Let's see how the peaking goes here from NTC. Relics. Can't find anything very well done here from the remainder of NTC. And they will keep themselves in this one, but there's still money to go for United. That is a huge round for NTC. And I, I do think it starts with um, whoever it was in the balcony out staying there welcome. And, and because they died, it doesn't mean that they were wrong. But I think, I mean, just from experience, like it's against multiple targets, even if they're ill-equipped. You don't often see somebody getting loads of frags from there without, di without dying. So It was Dazzle, let's call him out. Do you need to die on that hill is the question for me. Um, maybe it's a confidence play. We'll see. What yeah. is the implication here for the for the CT money? They've got another buy in them if this one goes wrong. No, they don't actually. No, they don't <laughs> at all. Yeah. So this... I mean, this could be a turning point for NTC, and you do wonder if that, if the hairs on the backs of the necks of E United start to stand up. It's it's possible that he felt like he can't get out of that position, so he should try to frag again, and and that's fair enough. And it never looks as bad when you die in those spots because you go down, like you're the first guy in a team to die, so, so it never feels as bad as it might be. So. A pretty slow start, all things considered. The, we're not seeing a bombardment of utility just yet. CT's holding on to most of theirs for the time being. Just Dapper who's used his. Is this going to be another nothing round from NTC? Not making any plays into the apartments yet. FNX is just about on his way there at the minute 10 mark, but we saw a similar round where I don't even know if they went in here at all. It will show some presence, but again, they're not really committing to the clearing of the apartments or forcing the CTs back from top mid. I do wonder how that will play out as these, as this time continues if we'll see a peak from the CT side and so on. And again, look at much, just how much utility the CTs have at the 45 second mark. They've got Molotovs for days. They've still got three smoke grenades in the hole having just deployed one. There's just so much going on for them. NTC aren't really giving them enough reason to use all of this. Pushing through the smoke now, Phelps. Oh, he's going to assassinate Ace. No prisoners, no survivors. Phelps is hunting them down. Dazzle on the bomb sites. He will be smoking things off. Actually, no, that's a T-smoke, in fact. There's two CTs in the site. This could still go quite well for them. Three quick kills going this way of the CTs. Now down to Dapper, who's on B. So maybe this won't happen. What does he decide to do? He's pretty far away. This is so, so difficult. I, I'm, I'm sure this is the right call here, just to hold off. And we can see that on the top of your screens, something that we have implement, implemented, implemented, <laughs> implemented, is the the rounds won and lost. Look at what was required with the time left to win that round. Phelps has to push for a smoke on arch, take down a player just rotating to the side. Maybe he got a sound cue. Gets a, a big second frag as well on the player on Speedway. But then even then, there are, there are still two smokes on short and one smoke between Library and the site and two CTs on the site itself. So even after those two frags, there's still a colossal problem for NTC to deal with. That said, they've broken the money of the CT side and they are only three rounds away. So this is, this is hairy for United. You see the play there with the big second frag. But even at this point... There are smokes down on arch, two smokes on short, but it still works out for NTC. And now we see an investment in pistols around this AWP. Dapper's going to be taking it to that short position, and I'm sure risks will be taken. 
And he looks like he's lining up for a peek. Yeah, he's peeking all the way down the ramp, and no one's really watching it. KNG goes down for free. Now Dapper's rotated towards the... Well, it looks like he's going towards B for the time being. Standard stuff. You know, there's one dangerous weapon, and it will try to be everywhere. You can see Dapper walking on the speedway, because if somebody was top banana, they would hear that rotation. Being aware of that, the CT side will uh, have a slow approach. So Palmer's cleared out. Banana though, not so much. United can know to rotate a man and that's what they'll do. Moose incoming. Moose has a smoke. I don't know if he'll be able to position it in time. We'll see. He's surely about to throw it. A lot of smokes there from the C uh, from the T's, but this might be helpful for the CT's because they have pistols, which are great at close range, great in the chaos. Although, Cello with a good position to work from. It looks as though things will go quite well for NTC. Mr. Moose able to get an additional kill, but NTC, 11 rounds now, climbing their way back. These are shaky rounds. Yes. And when United get back on the bye, I mean, it'll be very interesting. Even though they've been shaky rounds, NTC has still been winning them finally. So let's see, a tactical timeout from E United. Ace has the money from AWP, not much else, however, but I don't think he'll be too concerned with that as long as he can position himself to avoid initial grenades, he might be okay. But these might be these might feel like dire straits for E United. What's he gonna do, Ace? He is the AWPA, he needs to buy the AWP. Be madness if he didn't. Come on. <laughs> Why are you slow playing us? Come on man. There, there we, we go. go. <laughs> <laughs> the AWP smoke flash classic combo. No Kevlar. Naked nudist. Nudist beach. We'll see whether or not that's actually going to be successful for him though. You've got to be careful with those wall bangs. Those will hurt a lot. Those walls are thin. Very thin. But the angle is not shallow enough from Phelps. You can see it's just not shallow enough. He c if he moves further to the right, you can actually, I think, shoot towards Ace there. But that's okay. It's generally there to just prevent the CTs from wanting to walk down the corridor anyway. Create some presence. And this is a good start from NTC. They've got control of Banana. They've got the pressure on two apartments. You would like to see them take apartments with two players now. One going up the stairs, one going through the balcony. But they still haven't taken apartments. Yeah, and the United still are still having smoke grenades for longer than you might like if you're on the T side right now. Ace and Moose with the last two. Ace is still in the apartments, but if he gets double peaked, which he won't, he would get absolutely annihilated. Just manages to escape, and he still has a smoke grenade. He can drop it on the balcony, but he's got his teammate for that, and he's holding the angle towards Boiler. Oh, boy. So two players on Banana. The bomb is still top mid. There are 29 seconds remaining. Does Ace redeploy an apartment? Are they going to rotate or what's the plan? There's 24 seconds now and there's still two players. Okay, it seems it may be offering a fake. So it's going to be a raw push into the B bomb site again from NTC with 15 seconds left. Oh, and Dazzle might catch them as they all go in towards the core position. They're lining up for everyone at the moment. The spray is going in and it's doing a great job here for United. And indeed, Dazzle does catch one. And KNG is the last man standing, but no time to get the bomb. It is a one round for United. They just left themselves with just not enough time. They opened up the round perfectly, but then there was just a point in which they should have kept doing stuff and they just stopped. They are their own worst enemy, perhaps. Uh, I just feel like they're running the clock down so much that there's barely time to deal with someone in an un unexpected position. Like there's, after that happens, there's five seconds on the clock. There's no time for error correction and th it's they who need the time. You could add 10 seconds to that. Sometimes add 20 seconds. So you're not too predictable, but. I don't know. Ooh, let's put them in a very bad spot because if they lose this round, the money's good for United and they've got nothing and it's ma against match points. So this is this starting to look like a very, very bad situation. 
And if you're just joining us, NTC did lose the first map of this best of three against the United. There's the push with the flashbang. The flashbang's effective. They're blocking each other on the bomb site. Still no one dead just yet. Counterflash is doing their job as well for the CTs. Relics can't turn to find success. Cello takes him down, takes them both down. And this could just be exactly what NTC needed. That's got to be a save. Thick Dazzle showing some presence, shooting through the smoke. There's lots of us here. Really, it's just him, and now he's <laughs> out of there. Can There's go so many. For the save to hold on to what they have. Maybe Ace can find something. So he's just on the CZ, but um, I mean, it's better from NTC. They uh, push with, with more than 15 seconds on the clock, so that's a good start. And it's needed as well. Maybe this pressure is uh, is what they need at the moment. They will put United in a weird situation, money-wise. So it'll be very interesting to see how these uh, how these rounds play out. There are tough decisions to be made here for the CT team. Ooh, what if Kenji goes down the ramp? No, see, they know they don't need to go beyond banana. A lot of people will just keep running for no particular reason, but you don't need to go beyond banana if it's planted on B. So if you're not hunting, you can just stay on banana. Quite happy there. Hold your angles. Good to go. Okay, so it'd be cool to see an approach from United where they... They do the classic thing where you sort of just try and delay as much as possible. You know, you stack those smokes. See what the reaction is from NTC. Because they've not been too brave around some of the smokes. All the money spent from United. Three CZs, two M4s. I like how they prioritize having utility and go for the CZs because it is better than having a UMP and a FAMAS and stuff like that most of the time in certain spots. So if that can, if you can do that and just have full grenades, I think that's just so imperative. On a map like Inferno. Oh, is that double logs? Yeah. Oh, it's not deep enough though. That would have been a kill. Astralis is so good at that. Just Astralis will do it in a way where they'll pressure Banana so that if there is a player standing somewhere, the only place that he's allowed to stand is logs, and then they double HE logs, and you die. <laughs> so, and then then they then they peek the the left side to check that that nook, and so there's just there's just no way to to have on it. So a very effective use of utility. They are on an, another level in that regard. On the subject of one minute mark. A uh, second smoke has just been deployed. A third one just been deployed. Yes, there are plenty of CTs. I love that smoke. That's such a good smoke. It's a containment smoke. Pushing through this is absolute suicide. Although, Dapper and uh, Relics have no more smoke grenades at this point. So that's going to be a problem because there are four of these five players here. Phelps trying to offer something, but they are not believing this. The trade situation is there and Relics just cannot get his reload in time. That's going to work out, it seems for the NTC team, although they're not committing beyond this Molotov. They're just waiting it out. But Moose is uh, on A and he's the only person with a smoke. If there was a re-smoke there, that would have been quite unbelievable. But there we are, NTC charge into the B-bomb site. 15 seconds left, but both CTs are on A. They've given That's this one up, they've oh, got rifles and oh. FNX is wide. <laughs> why, why are you doing this? Where for? Where for? Killing your teammates. Uh, that, it, that is very weird. But I, that round has so much potential for United. They had all the right players in the right positions, doing the right sort of things. The only thing that I think that you could say is that I guess it's more preferable to to that point in the round, maybe fall back into the site and drop the smoke instead of on the 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 wall. You drop it on the on the choke point into the bomb site. I don't know, how, like, what your thoughts on are on that, but it's situational. If you if you know they're pushing. When you do that, then it's great. But um, it's it's easy to say, and not necessarily easy to do at the right time. Just because it's harder to trade into the site, I suppose. But either way, whichever way you cut it, it is still a one round for NTC. And they are one away from tying things up. And the economy for United is not in the best of places. They'll be able to buy next round, but 
it's not going to look great. So they would love to save a gun at the very least upon losing this round. That would be nice. But we'll have to see what they have in store. You can see that CZ was dropped to a teammate, to Relics, from one of the surviving players. They pretty much got a standard setup here at United with two rifles and three pistols. I don't know how much they need the extra money, but um, with one smoke this time and nothing else going on, maybe a more concentrated effort would be of interest. Two of these players have USPs, for example, so I think perhaps there is more to be done than a default with two USPs, two M4s and a CZ. And they're just wait they're still just waiting for them to come to them. I mean it's fair enough that your opponent is going to expect some aggression from you. But you I don't think you can just have a standard round with a disparity in weaponry like this. I don't know what value they get the C T side gets out of uh out of this. Although Dazzle's basically flanked through apartments, but they've gone through the oh, smoke, wow. so he's missed everyone. No, but that could work out really well because I don't know that they'd ever suspect that. His timing's really good. Dazzle could be... He could be the man that just absolutely turns this round. Oh, my God, they're even getting frags in the bomb site. Dazzle strikes. He gets himself one, causes more distraction. USP in action. One more player to go. Can't get any damage down. It's Dapper against Cello King, and there's no time. <laughs> my God. NTC left it too late once again, and Dazzle's flank created just enough chaos for them to not be able to plant the bomb. Well, how about that? They must have realized that the, the rap was coming once he sees nothing top mid. He makes sure he doesn't give the sound cues away. At this point, there's three seconds on the clock so he can go for the duel because his teammate's miles away. And uh, surely not like this. Yeah, that's that sucks, doesn't it? That is disappointing. Well, NTC have a great buy. And... There's a fair chance that United will have a worse buy. I don't know how much is on the floor. Okay, so it's fairly even. They've got two AWPs, so it's uh, this is the round. Honestly, Dazzle run into the apartments and just go crazy again. Or, or actually even seeing like uh, Ace take the AWP into the apartments and take a peek uh, down through the stairs or something like that. Could be fun as well. I just like aggression, James. I just like... I like, uh, I like it when people take initiative. Not a bad bit of damage. Chunky. Okay. Ace push back. Top mid claimed from NTC. That w There was no flash there, right? That was just a dry... Just a dry, yeah. I think perhaps they've realized the standard setup of the CT side. Well, even if they have, there are two unanswered frags from Moose and Dazzle. No idea how those came about. Maybe the push top mid gave them too much confidence towards the short position because it was Ace on Arch who they pushed off and the other two were playing passive the whole time. They were nowhere near top mid. So that may have been a false sense of security. But now RE United over investing in A in a uh, in a five versus three because it's a concentrated effort towards the B bomb site, but Dapper's on speedway because there's no vision towards Arch. Now Relics has all the information. The repeak is dirty! And Phelps now on a one versus four. Melos off on the site, and that's going to be that. The, wow. The back and forth, but the fashion in which United won that round to take them to 15 was crazy. And then off they go, finishing finishing things off. A 2-0. I don't know if many people saw that coming. Well, the, the person who's close to seeing it coming was, was Frankie James. <laughs> so God, God Frankie, I don't know. I mean, God save us all. Uh, wow, that was that was pretty incredible. I mean, we saw, you know, Relics there. He always has it in him. Had a great uh, finish. He was able to anchor it. I do agree with you. I, I think you know the decision making there of just just it's in a five v three, having the risk that what if they do go B and what if Relics misses that first shot, you could lose the round. You know, it's, so either way, you know, all of that sort of taken aside, I think I think this is an absolute deserved victory for United. They've they've steadily improved and, and grinded their way to this point, and they played a pretty good match. That has to be a disappointing loss for NTC. But again, they are playing against a team who are most certainly a unit. We've seen that. They play as a team. They're not a group of individuals. They are a solid unit. And uh, 
Congratulations to them. Uh, a very unexpected 2-0, but uh, an interesting one to see. But that's got to be frustrating. A second last round, they have to be thinking, how on earth did that even happen? There was, a, there was other situations, wasn't there? Wasn't there some other spots like that? It's, it's just, there's, there was a lot of shaky rounds, I think, in the series in general. But, but yeah, they've got a lot of work to do. Pala and E United take it away. Surrounded by many happy gentlemen right now. Congratulations for the second or third time today, in fact. Your first best of three victory here at the Miners, putting you directly in contention for a qualifying spot for the offline qualifiers. Skylar, what's going through your head? Uh, it's pretty happy. I'm glad uh, we definitely picked up just in general our play, even from earlier, even from the first match that we won versus NTC. Like Everything was just flowing. Our comms were much cleaner. I'm very happy. Awesome. Now let's talk about the veto and the maps. Train is actually a pretty good map in terms of how many wins you guys have on it. Were you surprised slightly by the fact that they picked it? Um, not really. They they played it against Swole earlier, and I know that they're pretty confident on it. Um, also, we we haven't really played Train much recently, so I don't know if they looked at our match history and saw that, but I wasn't that surprised. Okay, and then moving forward into... Actually, no. Tell us about the T side on Train, because that was nothing short of spectacular. 11 rounds, I think it was, that you guys got. Mm. Yeah, uh, we kind of just kept our play dynamic. We would do slow defaults, and we would change the pace and do like a fast outer hit, and I think... Uh, it just made them, it was very hard for them to read like how we were playing and what we were going to do. And then moving into Inferno, was it the way you guys played on train that kind of spurred you on to victory? It got very close at the end, but once again, it seemed like you guys had the tools at your disposal to dispatch of NTC. Yeah, our Inferno can be very hit or miss, but uh, they actually haven't played Inferno in two months. So we had very little info on you know how they played it. Um, but I think it did. It definitely gave us confidence going to the second map, and you know we were happy we were able to get the 2-0. And now let's talk a bit in general terms, because at this point we've seen you play three times at this event, two best of ones, one best of three, and it looks like the structure that you guys are running in the team is working out, at least most of the time. Tell us about how you guys are as a team and what you're trying to build towards. I think right now it's kind of all coming together because they made two changes, me and Dapper joined. I was a brand new IGL, we had to start from scratch and sort of build up, so it was very rough in the beginning, but now that we've had a decent amount of matches together and we've been to a few events, you know, our structure is kind of coming together and we're playing a little bit more disciplined. Um, and I just think the more experience we get, the better that we'll be, the more it'll help us. Yeah, because as we established before, you would, I mean, it's arguable that you have the most experience on your team. You're playing with some less experienced players than yourself. Do you feel like you have some rough diamonds that you're trying to um, shine and, and get to play at the highest potential that they have? I think so. I mean, of course, I'm no exception when it comes to you know making mistakes and whatnot. But you'll find that when you take the leap from, let's say, a MDL team, and then you take the leap to the pro level, where whether it's EPL or ECS, that you can't really make these small mistakes that uh, lesser skilled teams let you get away with. You know, but the better the team is, the more they punish you for those mistakes, and so you have to clean up your play. You have to, you have to polish the the diamonds in the rough, and you know, that's what we're trying to do. And then final two questions towards yourself, Skylar. First thing, you are a player that has played on some pretty high level teams, not necessarily broken into tier one, but you have uh, a good record with certain people, but then things kind of like, they come to be, they, the teams dismantle and you're kind of left on your own or finding bits and pieces to put together. With E United and this project, what can you say with regards to that? Um, honestly, between like, as when I moved from Selfless to TSM and that became Misfits, it was kind of a mess. Uh, I had almost no role identity. I was just shifted around all the time. And then even on this team, I got thrown into IGL. I joined the team to possibly just take, you know, a different role. But I think that it's kind of coming together. I don't really particularly mind the role I play as long as, you know, we find success. And uh, if the other players can fit into the roles and if they can fit into, like, the system or they're happy with the way that I'm calling, then I'm happy. And so what I mean to ask then is this E United project, the team where you feel you're going to prove to everybody that you and potentially these guys around you can contend for those tier one, tier two spots and get to a major? I feel so. I just think uh, we just need to keep on the path that we're on right now and, you know, and realize there's the more practice, the more experience we get, the closer that we'll get to that goal. Well, Skylar, I know behind the scenes you're a fantastic guy and I'm happy to see you guys doing well on the server. Of course, you have more matches to come, so you're not there quite yet. Any final thoughts? Uh... I mean, Cello said he would 2-0 us, but we turned it around. 
There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Great to talk to you and congratulations to United. Them's my boys, E United. Although they did scare us at times, didn't they, Vendetta? You were talking about some economical mistakes. then kind of uh, making a bit of a misjudgment as to how much money there was on the side of NTC after losing a buy round where four players on the NTC survive uh, and you see a four spy that just doesn't lead to anything at all. Uh, NTC managed to actually build up quite a bit of an economy. Uh, United are then you know basically forced to, to two eco rounds in a row before they can get a buy going and at that point NTC just actually just turned the half around so going off from a terrible start where they lose pistol and uh, even get reset after the initial uh, after the initial uh, buy round, then you know they make it into an eight, seven and a half, which they can be okay with at that point. That's still something to work with. But once again, United, they're they're showing a lot of resilience and just uh, again, like the individuals on their side are, are stepping up. They're doing it as as a unit as well, which is really fun to see. But they're all having like massive impact rounds. So you can see Relics having a really solid game there, doing a ton of damage. But also Moose, uh, definitely uh, one who stood out. Uh, stood out to me during, uh, especially Inferno. Well, they got all of tomorrow to scream as a team and really work out playing together. Relic, so a new IDL for E United, Jacob. Do you think that it's down to him that they made those mistakes with their economy? Uh, it's it's a joint decision sometimes. The in-game leader, obviously the guy with the last word, but he takes in approaches from, from all the teammates uh, who may have a call or a read that he doesn't know or are not aware of. They always have a coach behind them, could be the guy, you know, tapping them and, and saying this would be a smart move to do now. So it's it's tough to blame a certain person, but definitely a mistake and definitely a, an area they have to look at. And that's what you do when you go in and, and look at matches like this. Yes, they won, but there's still a lot of mistakes to be found. And if you can fix those mistakes going into the playoff bracket on Monday, that'll be a great thing for United. Oh, we're back in vision right now, so I get to do this. <laughs> Jacob, because what was that you guys were saying? Oh, it's going to be NTC's 2-0, 2-1. Okay, fine, I could only do a half dance. I'll only dance this side, not that <laughs> side. Don't deserve that side because I said it was going to be 2-1 at United. Yeah. But actually it was 2-0 because they knew that you've only had two hours sleep. So really, you should be thanking United, Jacob. Yeah, thank you so much, United. <laughs> uh, I mean, to be fair, they were the better team over the series. Like, yeah. they, they weren't fair and square. They yeah. were better. We were kind of expecting NTC to to improve as, as they went along in the tournament, uh, gradually improve. And while, yeah, sure, you could say that they were at least competitive in the, in the second series, they made a ton of mistakes. Like, holy hell, that T side was just littered with just incredibly poor communication. Like, I don't speak Portuguese, but I can definitely tell people how to, how, like, what direction to look in, in most languages, I would imagine, like, after, you know, a couple of days. And that was just ba very basic stuff that went completely wrong for them. You could see them, you know, as they're moving up for, for basic, like, A split through apartments. Uh, by quad side, you have Phelps just staring in towards pit that FNX has already been in for about three seconds and then getting shot in the back. Like, just very basic stuff that should never, never, ever happen with players of this scale level, um, just continuously happening over and over again. It tells quite a story when, when pretty much all the rounds NTC one had to come off the back of a 3k from somebody. It had to be Chelo coming in with a triple kill, Phelps coming in with a triple kill, if an X. It was down to the individual performance, and there was not like any team rounds or any like rounds where you say, okay, there's a flash here, there's a peak here, you get a kill, and it's going to end up in a safe situation. It was all down to two individual plays. If they had to get any rounds this game, it, it would have to be down to a triple kill or, or 4k from one of the guys, which is normally not a great sign. It's great to have those players to be able to do that off the back of a team play, uh, yeah. off the back of, of having a team right, but they don't have the team play at all, as you said, and as you gave examples to. They just had the individual place, and it's just not enough on this level. United is, is not a strong team in that sense. It's not like strong individual players, but they played as a team. And when it comes to Counter Strike, if you're the better team in the end, you're gonna win the match. Yeah, it's like that's Plan A, and NTC just kind of started at Plan B. Yeah, that's, that's all never where you want to be. Well, let's see where that's got us at the end of today. NRG there and E United, they will be returning for the playoffs on Monday morning. And boy, we are looking forward to seeing those guys back in action. They've already had one match. I'm looking forward to seeing whether they're actually going to have to play each other for a third time. It could happen. It could happen. If it, if in, I mean, if we get to that point, right? Like, uh, we might see it come all the way down to it uh, when the final two spots are being decided. Mm. I'm just, I'm just kind of still shocked that we didn't see a better NTC. 
it it gotta be the end for them. Like it gotta be at this point where they have to look at the roster and think, okay, this is not good enough. Like we're a team that should be doing better. We brought in Cello, which is uh, a great prospect from the Luminosity lineup, probably and arguably the best player of that lineup. Picked into NCC. He he thought he made a step up, but in fact he he made a step down. Couldn't even <laughs> couldn't even like qualify against G United in a game like this. So they have to be seriously looking at this lineup and figure out what is the problem. Where can we fix our mistakes? Is it is it a team that we're gonna move on with? Can we can we fix this or do we have to change a player? Get in an identity player, identity role or something like that yeah. that could help them out. I, I think this is going to be the end for this five-man core of this lineup and we're going to have to see some changes if NCC is, is going to do any any ravage against anyone. E United is a team they should be able to beat. You're the bringer of doom, Jacob. <laughs> I'm so sorry. If you guys would like to win something at home, let's lighten the mood now. <laughs> you can go to faceitmajor.com forward slash giveaway. There's two million Faceit points up for grabs and you can find out how you win on that website. And don't forget, you can get in touch with us. We always want to hear what you guys are thinking. Face it major. Sorry, I did that wrong again. Face it minor. But remember face it major because you're going to need that in September, guys. Face it minor. Hashtag. Use it on the socials and we will be sure to peruse and see what you're saying, what you're thinking about the teams. Tomorrow, we've got Group B. We've got four more teams stepping up to the plate. We've got Furia, we've got Complexity, we've got Dignitas and we've got Rogue. Now, Furia, I'm actually kind of rooting for. They're our second SA qualifying team. And I think those guys have got a few tricks up their sleeve. Yeah, I'm actually really excited to see them as well. They did uh, very well for themselves at Sotek, beating Complexity, who's, you know, they you know happen to be in a groups with further minor qualifier, which should make for a pretty fun matchup. Uh, I also think uh, both Rogue had shown uh, towards the later stages of, uh, of their EPL season, et cetera, like showing good signs of, uh, of what to come. They also had a good run at Dreamhack Austin, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. So I think there's actually a lot of fun, yeah, fun matchups to look forward to tomorrow. Yeah, Complexity looking better than ever. Now they have Stanislaw as the dedicated in-game leader, mm -hmm. uh, having a, a better lineup basically than ever. And then we have Dignitas, who uh, had, a, had yeah, a rough... Your favorite team. My favorite team, obviously. Yeah. Uh, had a rough showing in, in the ESL Pro League. Uh, managed to win one map, I believe, uh, throughout the entire season or something like that. Maybe two. It was Remember. It wasn't great. It wasn't a lot. So uh, they'll have to uh, to do better now. But again, that's the team that's been uh, upgrading a little bit. They got Rix now on the team. They got PTR. That's a lie. Is he? Oh, PTR is no, playing for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, got a, they got a few upgrades on, on a certain few key position. So again, a, a very stacked group. And I say a, a more even group than we saw today, where Swole Patrol were a little bit under the level of NTC and uh, and United. I love an underdog. I can't wait to see what Dignitas pull out of the Me bag. Neither. You know, I need someone to root for, and I think it's <laughs> probably going to be them. Guys, we'll be back at 11.45 a.m. tomorrow with the Group B action. Please join us. Hashtag FaceItMinor on the socials. Let us know ahead of time what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and we'll see you tomorrow.